Hello and welcome to the DSO Imager channel. My name is James and I wanted to run through the workflow of my latest image, the Pelican Nebula. This is going to be a, should be a quick video. Uh, if you want to see more uh, about how I process these images, I recently posted a two-part series on uh, processing uh, an image like this and all the steps that I did for this pelican shot with the exception of one step which I'll show in this video everything else was done is covered in that two-part series so please check out that two-part series if you're looking for for a more of a tutorial type of video now I shot the uh, pelican neb nebula twice before last year I shot it with my uh, 70 millimeter scope and an ASI 533 color camera and I actually did a two panel mosaic. I was still learning the ins and outs of that camera and that system at the time uh, but this is this was the first time I attempted shooting this. And this is at 336 millimeter focal length. And the second time I shot it was recently when I did the uh, the uh, review of that S SV Boney CLS filter and this was with uh, a bright moon it was just a test of the filter I wanted to spend more time on this but the weather was just really bad I think if I remember correctly I only have a couple hours uh, on this shot so uh, this is the first time I pointed my 8 inch edge at uh, this target and I was in for a real treat let's take a look at the HA here I mean, this is really clean data here. And the total integration time was 24 hours exactly. So I think I got a little bit more than eight hours of HA and like seven and a half hours of uh, 03 and um, uh, just under, or right around seven hours of S2. Let's take a look at the O3. All right, so I mean O3 is such a weak signal here, but uh, we actually we got a lot in there. And of course it's going to be noisier than the uh, HA, but it's it's still pretty decent, I think. And lastly, let's take uh, the S2. So there's a lot of good S2 data on this target. Of course, it's going to be a little noisier than HA, but lots of detail in here. Usually, uh, S2 is a, kind of like a weak version of HA, but clearly we have some unique structure in the S2, and that's going to do a lot to uh, pull out a really nice image. Alright, so first thing I did is I just combined these using the LRGB combination tool. And uh, this is the auto stretched version of that. And then of course I'll run dynamic background extraction. And here's what we get after running dynamic background extraction. So this data was looking really promising to me and I wanted to try something uh, that I don't normally run. So this is where I deviated a little bit from my normal uh, processing and I use HDR multi-scale transform. Now this is a really powerful tool uh, and what that means is that it's very easy to overdo it. Uh, so this number of layers this is your main uh, lever that you can play with and it's uh, counterintuitive the higher the number uh, the less of an impact it's going to have so even at the default setting it tends to really overcook an image and I applied this I bumped it up to 8 uh, and this is what I got so I mean you can see where it did a nice job of doing some contrast here but it's not a great looking image either 
So what you can do to kind of smooth things out is actually just use pixel math and add uh, the two together. So I did, uh, I added this image to this image. And the result was this. So it's kind of like splitting the difference between the two. I still wasn't totally sold on this uh, when I started the processing, but I decided to go ahead and work on this and uh, see how things turned out. So the next thing I ran was the uh, denoise. And if you see my other videos lately, what I've been doing with denoising or noise, noise reduction is running it while the image is still linear and I just use the easy processing suite uh, denoise. And I tweak the settings a little bit and this is what we end up with. So I can do a comparison here. And you can see. So, I mean, just a little bit grainier here. And the main thing that I look for when I do denoise is I don't want to sacrifice any detail. If uh, I, I'll put up or I'll tolerate some grain, but leave the detail in there. Uh, it, they're really slick, smooth images. They look great from a distance, but once you take a closer look, all you lose, you end up losing all of this detail. And this detail is, at least for me, is what I'm trying to preserve. Now, uh, just a heads up, if you hear any chimes during this recording, I do, have, uh, I do have an active imaging session going. In fact, I'll just pop it up here really quick. And uh, the guiding's kind of iffy. I don't know if this data on my Edge 8 is salvageable or not. Usually with my RMS around 0.8, it's kind of maybe it's good, maybe not. But uh, it keeps losing the star occasionally here. So if you hear that chime, that's what's going on. Okay, so after uh, noise reduction, I went ahead and pulled the luminance out. And if you've been watching my videos, you know what I like to do at this stage is deconvolution. And so we can actually take a look at the impacts of deconvolution. So this is with uh, deconvolution applied, and that's without it. So the obvious thing that you see is the stars. Deconvolution does a nice job with the stars, as long as you don't overdo it. It's, again, one of those tools that you can really, really overdo it and, and, and overcook your image. So really a nice job with the stars. And now if we take a closer look at some of this nebulosity, you can see a very subtle sharpening and so it seems like it's really minor and when you're zoomed out like this it may not be too noticeable but uh, trust me it really helps the uh, over qual overall quality of your image Okay, so after we're finished with the uh, work on the luminance, it's time to add it back to our uh, color uh, image. And uh, what you want to do, and I've touched on this before, is you want to blur out this image. You want to smooth it out. So that's what I've done here. And the way I do that with the color image is I go to noise reduction and multi-scale uh, multi medium transform and you just disable these layers here like that and I go over in a little bit more detail in those processing videos but you, you, you disable all the layers except for the last one and you apply it and that smooths this out and then after that you take the LRGB tool and you put this in the LRGB tool just on the luminance channel alone and just drag and drop it on top of this blurred color image and that's what you end up with now, actually, let me uh, let me step back. I skipped something uh, before. So before I blur this, I do a stretch, and in this case, I did the auto stretch. And the same thing with your luminance channel. Uh, I did an auto stretch on that, and uh, so these both have to uh, be stretched before you do this combination. So anyway, you end up with this, and then once I have the recombined luminance color data that's been processed at this point with deconvolution and everything. The next step is to remove the stars 
and then I can focus on uh, working on the nebula itself. And uh, that's just simply applying StarNet, and this gives me this image here. So at this point, basically I just do a lot of work with curves. I play around with some range masks. Maybe I'll use a color mask. I don't believe I did in this case with this particular image. And I may even um, apply uh, an unsharp mask, which I did do on this one. Uh, I just hit a range mask and hit these brighter areas with a very mild unsharp mask. So after all of that, what I ended up with was this here. So I'm liking how this uh, turned out. I, I love all the colors. You got hints of red and some orange in there with some yellows and you got some greens in there and all that blue and uh, was able to pull out some of these details that you don't typically see in a lot of images. Now it is a little grainy. I uh, because the data was was good quality and um, I, I felt like pushing it a little bit more than I typically do. And so if you zoom in there, you are going to see some of that grain. But I think it came out pretty good. So next was the work on the stars. And here's what they look like after I did everything. Um, and again, uh, like I mentioned before, the processing videos I posted recently go over what I do in the stars. And then I just use pixel math to add them together. And so here's our final image. And so uh, what do you guys think? I think this might be one of my best images. Uh, this uh, camera and scope combination, this ASI 294 Mono with the uh, edge, 8 inch edge, uh, it's a really good combination. All this on a, on a Skywatcher EQ6R. So it's not like I'm running premium equipment here. And uh, it's, it's pumping out some solid images, I think. So I'd love to hear what you guys think. Uh, if you like this, if you want to see more, you know, please uh, like this video and subscribe. And um, have a good evening. Clear skies.